Hey, Steven, who's been saying that Cannon is the sleeper of the bunch? This guy. Jared Poland, Fro knows photo. Dot com and this is the official preview of the Canon EOS R5 and R6. Arr. Now I decided to put this all into one video because it's just much easier to do the preview this way so that you can look at the table of contents down below to jump from the R5 to the R6 to the video specs to the photo specs. We're gonna make it as easy and painless as possible for you to watch and enjoy this video. Now keep in mind, we didn't get any hands-on with any pre-production units as of this time. As soon as we get an R5 and R6 into our hands, we will give it the real world treatment treatment that we like to give it. Up until this point, Canon has been seeding out information for the last couple of months, so some of this information is going to be redundant, but now that it is all officially official, I'm gonna give you all the information right here and right now. We're gonna start with the EOS R5. Now this is a new body design. They've added the joystick, they've added a scroll wheel, they added a flash sync, which nobody gives a shit about flash sync anymore because you usually trigger things wirelessly. Now. People love the scroll wheel and people like joysticks. Now that was great in a DSLR world, but when they added the in the 1DX Mark III that touch sensitive joystick thing, that should have found its way into the EOS R5 and the R6, but it did not. I just, I love how quickly I can move the focusing points just by sliding my finger across it. But thankfully they got rid of the touch sensitive thing right here, which was on the EOS R. R. I'm not even sure they're ever gonna come out with another one of these, and since I just picked this bad boy up, now's a good time to probably tell you that this was a stopgap, that they're like, hey, we need to put out a camera that's mirrorless. Let's put this out and then buy ourselves some time till we come out with the R5 and the R6, which was a smart thing to actually do. In terms of the image sensor, they have a totally new 45 megapixel sensor that they say is capable of a high speed sensor readout. They also claim that it has enhanced dynamic range, reduced rolling shutter, and I would like to say it better have enhanced dynamic range. We know that with my Nikons and with my Sonys, I'm able to be off by a stop or two by accident sometimes and bring it back still with great contrast and a lot of quality. And I've seen with the Canons, if you're off slightly, it's much harder to bring those shadows back. It's just one of those things that I've noticed in all of the Canons that I've used, that if I am off ever so slightly, it's much harder to maintain the quality of the file without it getting a lot of noise and grain. So hopefully with the new single digit X processor, not to be confused with the digit 10 processor, nah, nah, X is gonna give it to you. That's why I like to say that. It has the same processor as the 1DX Mark III. In terms of ISO, we've got 100 to 51,200. Now keep in mind, it's a 45 megapixel sensor. So yeah, you're not gonna get the best high ISO capability, but I'd be interested to see what it looks like at 12,800. ISO has come a long way, and I hope that Canon's all new 45 megapixel sensor is going to give us some nice and clean files at 45 megapixels. You will be able to shoot 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second electronically. Now it doesn't have the same 20 frames per second electronic with a shutter that comes down, it's 20 frames per second that's silent. The 1DX Mark III offered you the ability to shoot at 20 frames per second with an actual mechanical shutter, this doesn't let you do that. Now in terms of card slots, you have dual slots, CF Express and one UHS-2 SD card slot. Now you will get 180 raw files in a burst to the CF Express card slot. You'll get 87 to the SD card slot when you're shooting raw, or you can do 83 raw at 20 frames per second, which is roughly four seconds of holding the shutter down when you're shooting in electronic shutter mode. 
Now, one of the things I like to do with dual card slots is shoot redundant. Raw goes to one slot, raw goes to the other slot, just in case there's ever an issue. But in this case, when you have two different card slots, two different speeds, and you can clearly see it right here that you get 180 raw burst with CF Express and 87 with the SD, is it going to slow down the right speed to the slower SD card slot, meaning you'll only get 87 shots in a burst? which is a lot of shots in a burst anyway, but there's no way in my mind that it's going to write at the fastest speed when the SD card slot and the SD cards are slower than CF Express. Just like in the EOS R, when you turn it off, the shutter comes down to protect the sensor. Now, what's protecting the shutter? You protect the shutter by not touching it. Do not touch the shutter. Don't be that guy, because if you break it, you're in trouble. Speaking of shutter, you top out at 1 8,000th of a second max with both the electronic shutter as well as the mechanical shutter. This is something where I would like to see the electronic shutter be able to go to 1 16,000th of a second or higher than that, 1 32,000th of a second. One of the Sonys does that, it's the A92, correct? I'm pretty sure the A92 allows you to go much higher. Uh, Steven's over there, that's why I'm looking at him. He's wearing a mask and we're socially distanced, so don't yell at me. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that the image that you see on the screen right now was taken with a Canon camera and edited with FroPak 2. If you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash FroPak 2. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters and if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you'd like to save even more, you can pick up the FroPak bundle, which includes FroPak 1 and FroPak 2 at a special discounted price. Now, let's get back to the video. This is the first Canon camera that's offering in-body image stabilization, and it is a doozy, at least here on paper. We'll have to see in the real world because it's saying you will get eight stops of image stabilization when it's paired with an RF lens with IS or without IS. They showed us an example that got two whole seconds of hand holdability of a landscapey type shot and it was still sharp and in focus. So this IS is shaping up to be pretty damn good for stills and pretty damn good for video at least on paper. We'll see how it works in the real world. Moving on to autofocus, it has second generation dual pixel CMOS AF now with 100% coverage. Wow, there's a note, it says wow. So that means Jared, say wow because you wrote wow. That is a wow. 100% coverage of the image sensor. That's top to bottom, left to right. You can move the focusing points with the joystick, probably slower than if it had one of those touch sensitive things, but at least you can do 100% of the sensor for the first time. Just like the 1DX Mark III, you have lock-on tracking and IAF. There's animal AF as well as bird AF, which may come in handy if you like to shoot birds you know, with lenses like the new 600 and 800 F11, which they dropped for the RF mount as well. I don't have a ton of information on those, but they did announce those in this announcement. Flipping over the paper, you will have a 5.76 million dot EVF with 120 frames per second refresh rate. On the back of the camera, there's a 3.2 inch, 2.1 million dot vary touch screen. Now, nobody can complain anymore that this can't be a vlogging camera because they wish it had a very angle screen. Not only does it have a very angle screen, it also has a very nice electronic viewfinder, at, at least on paper. I haven't actually seen it yet. Moving on to the video specs, we already knew that this was gonna be an action-packed camera, at least for the video specs based on what Canon has told us. And now we have everything official right here on my paper. Starting with 8K RAW with full width DCI or UHD 8K up to 30 frames per second internally recorded to the CF Express card slot. Now you can't do that to the SD card slot because it is moving a lot of freaking data. Now in terms of the raw file format, it's the same file format that you find in the 1DX Mark III. If you're wondering what is the max record time for 8K recording, that is about 20 minutes at normal room temperature. 
So if you're into hot yoga or you're going into a swimming pool area, maybe it's a little too hot and it's gonna give you some overheating issues. Anyway, moving on, full width 4K up to 120 frames per second. And an interesting side note, it doesn't even have 1080 at 120 frames per second. So if you wanna get 120 frames per second, you're shooting that at 4K. Now that is oversampled from 8.2K in DCI and 7.7K in UHD. And from what we can tell, there is no raw recording for 4K video. All video formats will record at 10-bit 422 with Canon Log or HDR PQ. You can do internal recording with all of the frame rates from 8K all the way down to 4K to whatever you need to do. You are doing that internally with autofocus for the whole thing. So no longer is it 4K 120 or 1080 120 without autofocus, you will have autofocus at all of the different frame rates. On top of that, they've added zebra lines and focus assist. Your record limit is 2959. It's not unlimited. Is 2959 enough? I'm not gonna bitch about it. It's 30 freaking minutes. That's a long time already. Uh, you now have a micro HDMI. They used to have in there mini HDMI. Not sure why they switched it to the smaller one because that micro one is pretty darn micro. Now in terms of your wireless transfer, you have a 2.4 and five gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Will that make raw transfer possible inside the camera? Meaning like, hey, send me that raw file to my phone or to my computer or to my iPad. Is that going to be possible? It is possibly possible. We'll have to check it out. And finally, the price is $38.99, which means I was off by 200 bucks because I said $34.99 to $36.99. So I was close. It's a little more expensive than I would have thought because the 5D Mark IV uh, was less expensive when it came out, but there's a lot inside of this camera. Canon's saying that it will be available by the end of July. Let's see if they hit that date because I can't wait to get my hands on one to play with it. If you're looking to add a grip to this camera, you can add a grip to this camera, unlike Nikon. There's two different grip versions. One has an ethernet built in as well as Wi-Fi, which is probably gonna give you more powerful transmission, uh, more power than what you have built into the camera. And then there is one that is $349 that's reverse compatible. It's gonna work with the R5 and the R6, which is exactly what Sony has done with their different grips. So those are the specs on paper for the EOS R5. This sounds like an insane freaking camera with those 45 megapixels, 12 frames a second. Just a couple years ago, we were pushing, you know, 36 megapixels in the Nikon at five frames a second, and this thing can do 20 frames a second. That's insane. So now let's move on to the specs of the Canon EOS R6. So here we go with the specs of the EOS R6. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, a lot of the specs in this camera are very similar to the EOS R5. Think about that for a second. They didn't try to dumb it down so far and take everything out of it. They put a lot into this camera, which is really interesting. So again, there are no production units out there in the world yet. We didn't get a hands-on at this point, but as soon as we get one in our hands, we will start to give it a real world review. In terms of the body, it is very similar to the EOS R5. It has a joystick, it has the control wheel, there is no top LCD, and there is no flash sync, but you do have that old school mode dial. Now this is one of the biggest differentiators differentiators or differentiators, that, that's the word, between the R5 and the R6 is the sensor. There is a 20.1 megapixel sensor that is very much like the 1DX Mark III. Think about that. A 1DX Mark III is a super expensive high-end pro camera and you're getting a very much like that sensor in this body? That's insane because it also has a single digit X gonna give it to you processor. That's the same processor that you find in the 1DX Mark III. The ISO range is 100 to 102,400 natively. That is an expansive range. Keep in mind, less megapixels means larger pixels in general, which means you should be able to do better, higher ISO capability in terms of cleanliness. Now, is it going to be the same as the 1DX Mark III? 
I like shooting with that camera. I know it didn't score very well based off of DxO, and you know what I have to say about DxO? I don't care about people, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I didn't mean to call them nerds, but if you're gonna sit in a, in a test environment and just test stuff, instead of actually going and shooting in a real world situation, there's nothing wrong with being a nerd, okay? There's nothing wrong with being a nerd. It just doesn't tell me whether a camera is good or not. Let me jump in here and ask you, would you like to take better pictures in only 11 days? Well, if you said yes, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com 11 days. Just like the 1DX Mark III and the EOS R5, you got 12 frames per second with mechanical and 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter. You have dual SD card slots that are both UHS-2, which means they're gonna write redundant at the same speed. Am I upset that it doesn't have a CF Express card slot? Not, not really. I mean, this is a less expensive camera that adds two card slots, not just one like the EOS R or the 6D or the 6D Mark II, where it only had one SD card slot. The fact that we have two SD card slots, I am perfectly fine with that. I do prefer CF Express at this point, but if this camera's less expensive, people aren't gonna wanna spend as much money to get those CF Express cards. In terms of burst rate, you will get 240 raw files in a row. The reason you you get more than the 45 megapixel one is because this is only 20 megapixel, which reminds me that I should have said 45 megapixels in the R5 is going to give you roughly a 45 megabyte file, where this one is going to give you roughly a 20 megabyte file, opposed to Nikon and Sony, that when you have a 47 megapixel sensor or you have a 61 megapixel sensor, you're getting like 100 and 120 megabyte file. I'm not sure why they're so bloated, but Canon has always been whatever the megapixel is, is whatever the megabyte of the file is going to be. Now, the same thing as the EOS R5 and the EOS R, at least it appears that when you turn it off based off of the images that we've seen, the shutter comes down to protect your sensor from dust, but it doesn't protect it from your finger. So do not finger your camera, just finger your food or something, because you like touch your food, but make sure your hands are washed first because you just wanna have clean hands when you're fingering your food. <laughs> just like the EOS R5, you've got one eight thousandth of a second max shutter for both the electronic and the mechanical. You have the same second generation dual pixel AF with 100% coverage even in this camera. You have the people and animal tracking just like in the R5. There is IBIS up to, Stephen, how many stops? Eight. Eight, just like in the in the in the EOS R5, you have a 3.69 million dot EVF at 120 frames per second refresh rate. There's a three inch 1.62 million dot vary angle screen. So once again, you have a vary angle screen. It rotates. You can touch it. Now we move on to the video specs, which are different than the EOS R5, but that is expected in this type of camera. You have UHD 4K up to 60 frames per second with a crop, which is the same as the 1DX Mark III, and it's only in standard IPB. There is no all I, and it is oversampled from 5K. For slow motion, you can do 1080 up to 120 frames per second. In all frame rates, you get 10-bit 422 with Canon Log or HDRPQ. Internal recording in all of those modes, as well as autofocus with all of the modes. There are zebra lines as well as focus assist. Wow, Steven, can you believe they put that in this camera as well? Whoa. Whoa is right, Steven. Record time, 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Same record limit that we are used to. Same thing, micro HDMI ports versus the mini HDMI that Canon used to work with. You have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth is built in and the price is going to be $24.99 and be available at the end of August. $2,500 is the launch price. This puts it smack dab right there against a Nikon Z6, even though that price has dropped substantially already. And it puts it against the Sony a7 III, which will be replaced at some point by the a7 IV, which should come in right around $2,000. This is the launch price. I expect this to go on rebate at some point for $200 off, maybe $300 off. This is a jam-packed camera for $2,500. 
2,500 bucks. The question is, which one is the right one for you? If you're a wedding photographer, a portrait photographer, a sports photographer, a landscape photographer who also shoots video and you want to have the best of the best, almost with honor, sir, you're looking at the $3,899 EOS R5. That is a stacked camera, at least on paper. But if you want to have a backup, you can't go wrong with a backup of the EOS R6, especially if you're shooting in lower light situations. This is a solid, solid offering. Canon was like, why release one camera when we can release two really unique and interesting cameras? Now, I do hope to get my hands on these cameras as soon as Canon gives us review units to play with so that we can take it into the real world, run it through its paces, and try to get some really good results to share with you guys so that you can download raw files and help you determine which one might be the right one for you. Now, you can get a grip for the EOS R6, I almost forgot to say that, but it's only the one grip that's 349 that is reverse compatible with the R5 and the R6. You just don't have the one with the Wi-Fi built in. That will not work on the R6. There were a couple of more lens announcements at the very end. There was a 100 to 500 45 to 7.1 LIS, an 85 F2 macro, IS, the RF 600, and there's an RF 800 F11, which don't get me started on F11, because most people won't know what hit them when they look at their pictures and wonder why they're so noisy and grainy because they shot tried shooting at dusk when it was getting darker and their ISO was at 25,600 or 55,000 or wherever the hell it goes. And they're like, why does my picture look so bad? Yeah, because it was F11. But at the prices that they are, which is up on the screen right now, they're pretty darn affordable for a 600 and an 800. Just know they're not gonna be the greatest things since sliced bread. If you're into shooting birds, you know, with cameras, then they might be a good option for you to just spot a bird at a distance. Let me cut in and ask you, would you like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? If you said yes, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. To go along with other lenses, you have an RF 1.4X teleconverter as well as a 2X teleconverter. That is a long video. That is a lot of information. We've been waiting a long time for Canon to come out with something like this. And now that it's real, the specs on paper seem fantastic. It doesn't seem like they've hindered the camera, at least based on the specs, as I keep saying. The real world is going to be the determining factor into whether or not Canon has done a good job or not, because their sensor capability is where they've fallen short for years. We need to see, did it get better? Are you getting great results? Are the files nice? Is the video nice? Canon, I'm gonna applaud you. You've done a very nice job up to this point coming out with this stuff to go well with your RF glass. This is a wake up call for the Sonys of the world, for the Nikons of the world, and Olympus, not you, because you don't even exist in the way that you used to exist anymore. That is where I'm gonna leave it, guys. Please leave some comments down below. Don't forget to like this if you like it, and also hit the subscribe button so you never miss one of our videos. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.